In this problem, we want to calculate the triple integral of f over the region s, where f is the constant function 1, and s is the region in R3 inside the sphere uh, of radius 2 about the origin and inside the right, right, right circular cylinder of radius 1 about the z-axis. Uh, so these conditions on s uh, can be translated into, into inequalities. Uh, the first one is the inequality 0 is less than or equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared is less than or equal to 4. And the 0 is on the other side because, of course, uh, that's just implied by the fact that these are all squares, which can, be, which can never be negative. Additionally, uh, for, the, for the cylinder, we have that 0 is less than or equal to x squared plus y squared less than or equal to 1. Now, we want to be doing this in cylindrical coordinates. So we can recall that in cylindrical coordinates, r squared equals x squared plus y squared, and z equals z. These are what we're, these are what we're going to need. Uh, z equals z, of course, become, because the two z's are the same in Cartesian and cylindrical coordinates. Now, if we make this substitution into these two inequalities, we reach that 0 is less than or equal to zero is less than or equal to r squared plus z squared is less than or equal to four, and r squared is less than or equal to one. This we can simplify because, because in cylindrical coordinates, r has to be positive. So this just becomes zero is less than or equal to r is less than or equal to one. And so this can be used as a limit of integration for r once we start setting up the integral itself. Now, if we want to seek limits of integration for z, we're going to need to manipulate the top inequality. We can subtract, we know that, so we, get, we can subtract uh, r from both sides and get that negative r squared, so, sorry, subtract r squared get that negative r squared is less than or equal to z squared is less than or equal to 4 minus r squared. Of course, we know that z squared is positive, and since 0 is going to be greater than negative r squared, the, the negative r squared just becomes, just becomes 0 as the lower bound on z squared. Now, we can take the square root of, the, of this inequality here, but we have to remember that because uh, the square root can also be negative, this also implies that z has to be greater than negative the square root of 4 minus r squared. So the square root we get is that this relation, negative, four minus r, negative square root of 4 minus r squared is less than or equal to z, which is less than or equal to positive square root of 4 minus r squared. Otherwise, if z was too far negative, its square root would be too far positive. So now we have limits of integration for r and z that define s. Uh, and these are based exclusively, th th these are all that we get from the original, from the original inequalities that defined what s was. Uh, if, we, if, if we imagine s, it's going to be the intersection of the solid ball of radius 2 and the solid right circular cylinder of radius 1 about the z-axis. Um, points in this are going to go all the way around the origin azimuthally, and so theta, the azimuthal angle in cylindrical coordinates, uh, is not restricted. It, it all, all, the only restrictions on it are those uh, given by the cylindrical coordinates themselves. So our limits of integration for theta are going to be that 0 is less than or equal to theta. All right. zero is less than or equal to theta is less than or equal to two pi. Now, we can actually start setting up the triple integral. And uh, we also have to figure out what order we want to set this up in. So there's going to be three integrals. And our function is one. 
but in cylindrical coordinates, the volume element instead of being d dx y instead of being dx dy dz like it is in Cartesian coordinates, we have to remember that the volume element is r dr d theta dz, where the the dr d theta and dz can be switched in order to your heart's content. So it's going to be r times three. separate d's. I'll erase this top thing just to give myself some room. So the theta, um, nothing, nothing in the function or the volume element or the limits of integration actually depends on theta. So we can put theta more or less wherever we want. Let's, let's, let's do the theta first uh, just to get it out of the way. So theta goes from 0 to 2 pi and so theta will be our innermost variable integrated. Now, we note that the limits of integration for z depend on r. So z will have to be integrated inside the r integral. Uh, otherwise, we'd have to redefine our limits of integration. And if you take a look at s, uh, or rather a cross section of s with a plane of constant theta, it'll look something like uh, something like this, and if we wanted to, uh, where this is r and this is z, if we wanted to have z begin integrated outermost, then we'd be looking at horizontal slices, and those and the height of those horizontal slices would not be given by a by the same function through the whole of uh, through, through the whole of s. So we're integrating z innermost, and so we put z next. So this is going to be minus square root of four minus r squared, up to square root of 4 minus r squared, dz, and then r goes on the outside. So now that we have our triple integral, we just evaluate this like we would any, any uh, given iterated integral. So on the inside, uh, integral of a constant is just, uh, so in, on the inside, the integrand is r, uh, which is a constant with respect to theta. So all this inter innermost integral is just, it will uh, add a theta, and then the theta becomes 2 pi minus 0. So it just multiplies the integrand by 2 pi. So we have a uh, double integral with the given limits, limits of integration of 2 pi r dz dr. Now, again, the innermost integral is a constant with respect to z. So what happens here is this constant, is, it, this constant becomes multiplied by z under the, impro, uh, under the indefinite integration, and the z, then the z becomes 4, pi, uh, 4 minus r square root of 4 minus r squared minus negative, four minus, negative square root of 4 minus r squared, which is just equal to 2 times square root of 4 minus r squared. So this is what you get after integrating with respect to z. Let's give myself some more room. Now this integral looks pretty hard, so we're going to use a u substitution where we let u equals square root of 4 minus r squared. And then du will equal uh, du by dr times dr, which is going to be equal to uh, 1 over 2 square root of 4 minus r squared, using the chain rule, of course, times negative 2r dr. And then we can multiply by, uh, mu multiply, uh, by the expression for u on both sides to get that u du equals negative r 
DR where the two twos cancel out and the R remains on the side with the DR. So additionally, the limits of integration will also change. So uh, U where R equals zero equals square root of four equals two and U where R equals one equals square root of three. Uh, we get that the lower limit of integration becomes larger than the upper limit of integration, but of course we can switch these later by applying a negative sign to the integral. So then the integral itself becomes, becomes a, a broken piece of chalk. Integral from two to square root of three of four pi u squared du, negative u squared, because of the negative in the uh, RDR, where one u we get from the RDR and the other u we get from uh, this expression, which is equal to u. And so integral of u squared is going to be uh, one third u cubed. times four pi, of course, where and so then uh, we evaluate this and we get that equals four pi over three times uh, the uh, we, we can switch the order of the subtraction by uh, removing this minus sign. Going to be 8 minus minus 3 times the cube root of 3. And this is this is the integral of 1 over all of s.